Aquarium. How are we doing today? Uh, I just want to say hello and howdy, hi to all of you. Let's see who's chilling in here already. Looks like we got some of the best in here. We got Jesse Hunter, Samuel Mendoza, Pete. What's up, Pete? New Local Austin, the Nano Aquarium Guy, Muppet, 929, Mountain Greenery, S, T-Bone, what's up, T-Bone? G-A-J, that's kind of hard to say for some reason. Uh, what's up, welcome. Patty's here. David Rayner, uh, Stephen P. 2003, the rapper B, who you see, ADHD, Aquatics, what's up? Rick Silva, Angie McGee, uh, Dragon Lair, what is up? 3B Aquatics, 3G, uh, Jay Oliver, Yellowstone Aquatics, Master Aquatics, call me Eduardo, um, Gannon Garner, um, oh yeah, sorry Gannon Garner about, uh, your, the message on Instagram, I just didn't see it for, uh, like a week or something, however long it was, and then when I saw it, I got to it, but, uh, yeah, it was a busy weekend, I was down in Portland speaking, uh, Anthony, what's up, let's see here, ah, popping in before work, right on, Jennifer, hello, so, all right, well, how is everybody doing today, what is going on, I feel like I should just Look, I should just stabilize this. Hold on. Um, today, I have no agenda. For the first time in my life, I have no agenda. No agenda. Um, let's see here. Uh, oh, yeah, let's see here. Uh, oh, you like what I did with my hair? I just uh, I just put a, 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 a ponytail up, basically. Hold on, guys. I know you're looking down my shirt and everything. I'm just getting this tripod stabilized. I don't want you guys to, to get motion sickness from everything. But, uh, let's see here. So, we're in the fish room, uh, you know, doing the fish room thing. But, what I wanted to uh, do today was basically just answer any questions. If we've got questions that would normally end up in the comments and so forth, then that would be uh, great. And uh, also, I'd like to um, sincerely apologize for all the pushing I've done of, of uh, fish for Black Friday. That should be the last sale of the year. Any more pushing I do should be for giveaways if it happens this, the rest of the year. Um, so we should be good to go. <laughs> um, but no, I actually do, I don't know if you guys like it or not, but I like using Aquatic Arts site just to... Uh, see what's new because they have a lot of oddballs and then they got the pictures and all the info and they research the info so um that's always helpful <laughs> uh azuravian what's going on peplin creek alexander alexander uh hey buddy i heard you dropped a super chat during uh, my lecture in portland and i wanted to thank you i was gonna actually call you to thank you but uh uh <laughs> you have a question uh, ADHD, uh, could I answer it? Well, I'm not gonna pin it because I'm not in stream, uh, StreamYard, but, uh, I can answer it, hopefully. Uh, Dragon Lair's got a full day. Feeding fish, tortoises, food, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, right now, uh, I'm in the fish room, obviously. I'm just sitting on the couch, but, uh, I'm in the fish room, it's about 80 degrees in here, a little too warm, uh, but it means that I don't need to heat anything else, and uh, I don't know, I'm settling in with winter, and I'm starting to feel like, hey Susan, what's up? That's what I'm starting to feel like. No, I'm starting to feel like, uh, you know, I need to get my breeding projects, uh, ducks in a line, like whatever I want to breed this winter, I need to like start getting that in tune. And I've never, um, I've never actually bred uh, like cichlid colonies of bigger size cichlids, so like the Haplochromis. I've done Oscars, Convicts, um, and you know like Cribs or Nanochromis, but I haven't done any uh, like the the Buffalo Head uh, Blue Lip cichlids. Like I'm excited to try to get them to spawn. Uh, haven't really done anything to get them to spawn yet. Basically, what I've done is I've just um, 
you know, kept the water clean. But I haven't done any of those big water changes or, you know, fed them a bunch of live, like, black worms or anything like that. So I have some tricks up my sleeve to hopefully get them to do that. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's good to be in the house, that's for sure. Uh, let's see here. ADHD asks, how do you, how do you heat your fish room? Well, so, I have a little space heater that, um... I want to say it's like 800 watts, technically, like, but none of that makes any sense because, like, you know, they have, like, a little power converter thing that's built in. So it it, it runs off a normal two-prong plug, which tells me that it's not that much energy, but because uh, the house max is out, of the, you know, it, it's not like a 240 or anything crazy, but it's just a little... Um, a little space heater in theory that I have for winter but right now what I do is I heat the tanks that need specific heat so if I am getting um, my quarries ready to spawn for instance I'll be turning up the heat to like 84 so on their tank it has a, uh, anywhere between a 200 and 300 watt heater and I'll heat that and if you have about five or six tanks um, well here let me just show you guys from the corner of the room um, if you have five or six tanks in a room, this room is, uh, nine feet by, or 11 feet by nine feet, and, um, you can, I've got that tank heated down there, uh, this tank's heated, one of them up here is, uh, these two are right here, this one is, and this one right here is and that's enough that it actually they work as kind of heat sinks and that heats the whole room to a pretty toasty temperature just with the uh, humidity that comes off of that and then I have a dehumidifier right here um, I should probably throw a link to that somewhere um, but I have a little dehumidifier that I use um, it's always running uh, so that's fun <laughs> but then I just use uh, so that's kind of a little trick that I wanted to um, I guess share with people and I was thinking about even doing like uh, people are telling us talking about TikTok this morning at, in, over in uh, the aquatic morning show Jess uh, Jess's channel of uh, Maine's tail fur and fins and um, you know I was thinking like I I don't want another social media platform I don't want to do things on another place but I was thinking like man uh, there are a lot of youngins that don't use uh, you know Facebook or Instagram much at all and uh, I am terrible at keeping things to like a minute or less and so maybe it would be good for me to try to just do like fish trivia on there or something and basically try to drive traffic over here and get people with a long, uh, what do you call it? A long attention span. We'll be nice. We'll say attention span. Um, so yeah. And, uh, you know, one of the first things I wanted to say on there actually, it was like, well, what would I say? What would I have to say? Well, one thing I was going to talk about was do plants need to sleep? Can you leave the light on, you know, 24 seven? Should you even leave the blue light on in your tank 24 seven? So I'm going to do a video on that that'll be short. But the other thing that I was just going to mention is that with, if you have a, uh, a dehumidifier, use that for your shrimp tanks. If you have caradina shrimp or, or rainbow fish that need really uh, low TDS water, very neutral water, generally speaking, uh, you want to test yours to make sure if you have one. But uh, dehumidifiers are absolutely phenomenal. At um, They're basically a distillation or uh, evaporative uh, condensing machine that then gives you very very low to no TDS water that's usually pretty neutral with no buffering um, hey Jess what's up <laughs> Ale uh, we will uh, Jess says come over we will do it together on TikTok yeah okay Jess because you're here and because you caught what I was saying and now you're holding my feet to the fire yeah, we'll, we'll make a TikTok at some point. Uh, I don't know if I'll actually uh, do much of anything on there long term, but I do feel like I can see the appeal of it. It's not the format that I want to talk on necessarily, but it is a format that might help make some of the shorts for YouTube also. Uh, 
and just teach me to keep things more modernly concise. Now, I'm still going to do my long talking live streams, and uh, if I have a presentation that I researched all month, I'm still going to talk for an hour and give the presentation like a, uh, you know, like a, a college or a school would have done. Oh, wow, I guys want to show you guys something real quick. My uh, Turkana Jewel Cichlids from Lake Turkana. Look at the female. She is just neon orange. She's just glowing. The males, they're, they're all right looking. Uh, but that female is just radiating beauty. Uh, and the males, you know, you can see they're, they're reddish pink with blue. And it just depends on the angle. But that female, she is ready. And I bet that's the male she will pick right here. This big old boy. That big old brute right there. Um, but these are the ones Kenny gave me that were like, yay big. So shout out to Kenny. All six have survived to adulthood. Um, also the black water tank, I figure, well, I've got this turned around. We can look at that while I, while we chat about other things, but this is the black water tank, uh, the Corridori Similis. I really love them. And then we've got the, uh, the, uh, Helengi eye. And then we also have the, uh, or glow light rasboras, which have the narrow little orange stripe in the black. And then we have the purple um, ra uh, glow light rasboras, which are, um, they're the same fish species and everything. See, here's one up here. They just don't have the little orange stripe on them. The orange stripe is actually kind of evolved down into their, the end of their fin and up into their face a bit. Um, so yeah, and then we've got some ruby tetras in here, but this tank uh, was the tank that had no filter for a super long time. Here's the bumblebee goby, doing well. Uh, and there's too many snails in here. That's what I found out when I capped it with sand, is there's too many darn snails in here. But we're working on getting the acidity down, uh, I mean, increasing the acidity, getting the pH down. So I've been gradually adding more and more botanicals and leaves and getting that water to uh, lower and lower. So we want to get the pH probably right around 5.5 to 6 um, and make it a true black water tank eventually. But um, for video purposes at least to talk about it, we're going to do that. Whereas long term, I like my new word I made up, lack water tanks where you've got the tannins in the water and it's around 6.5, but it's not actually killing your, you, you can still use hang off the back, you can still use uh, sponge filters and uh, or deep substrate, whatever you want is still gonna work for the, the nitrobacter or nitrobacillus uh, bacteria strains will still work. Um, Glitch Aquatic says, Alex, wait, I am not running a heater in my quarry tank and I have problems with getting water cool enough to trigger. Um, you're not, yeah, uh, in my tank and have, yeah, well, so you want to have a heater in a quarry tank usually. There's a few quarries that you don't need them, like, uh, Panda quarries, Trilineatus quarries, the, the False Julii's. Um, those ones generally are okay. Sometimes the Sturbys are okay. And actually the Similis, they live anywhere from 82 degrees, which is, you know, fairly warm water. But they're also found all the way in the mouth of, uh, or at the base of the Andean Mountains uh, in Peru. And over there, they get water that's about mm, 70 degrees year-round, um, if not a little cooler, because it's snow melt going through the jungle, basically. Uh, but these are real active, so that's one way to tell if your water is warm enough for your quarries, is they should, they're a fish that should be going up and down on the glass. If they're not, it's probably either too hot or too cold for them, uh, if all other things were constant, if all other standards were constant. They all should do the up and down thing, they like that, that's a, that's a sign of contentment in quarries, but... Um, you know, middle water swimming, that's, that's really, um, depending on the species, that's really a major sign of contentment. So if you know, if you see them swimming in the mid waters, um, active and they're foraging and looking amongst the hardscape and the plants, you know, nosing around like this little guy is, then you know that they're super healthy and happy. Um, usually that's when you'll see the iridescence and the other colors that are kind of subtle in quarries that sometimes don't always show up. So there's that. Um, but I mean, I would heat them for sure. 
Hey, Shanna, what's up? 503 Aquatics. I slept through cartoons on Saturday, Saturday morning cartoons, and that made me sad. Um, Amy Lou, Alex, for the most part, uh, we are here for the detailed info. If you want to spoon feed uh, one minute at a time, we'd be at TikTok. Yeah, I know. Uh, and that's exactly why I, I'm thinking maybe I'll do a few things on TikTok and see how it goes. Um, but it's more of a, an exercise for myself, quite frankly. Um, <laughs> William's watching at 1.25. Uh, not used to Alex speaking at a normal speed. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Fish Kid, what's up? Um, in your opinion, could a brackish 17-gallon uh, long with no stocking yet, yet provide a good long-term home for a figure eight puffer? Yeah. Definitely. I think you'd be fine with that. Um, do I still have my Crebenzis? Um, I still have a, a couple Crebenzis in here. Uh, they were kind of a plague, I'm not going to lie. I had just so many Cribs for a while. I couldn't get them to stop spawning. They were spawning all the time, all year round, like weekly. Uh, and where where is she? There's usually one female that's pretty bold and hangs out in the open waters with the bigger haplochromus and stuff in here. Again, this is a dumb fish to have with haplochromus, generally speaking, but she's mean. She was Sergio's partner, and Sergio had killed many of his former mates. And so uh, her and her sister were Sergio's last partners, and they held their own together against him. Uh, so basically, uh, she's a tough, she's a tough angelfish. But this Aplochromus malungu that Lawrence Kent gave me, uh, that doesn't have a scientific name, he is, uh, he's really pretty. He's colored up right now as if he was spawning, uh, but it's for her. She's been in spawning colors ever since she's been in the tank. And, um, I mean, to give you an idea of size, she's like hand size. She's back in the tank, obviously, but she's about the size of my full hand. And then there's, there are some cribs in here, though, with them. Even though they're, obviously, an angelfish isn't that, and a Siamese algae eater aren't going to be with them in the wild. But, um, they hold their own, so I've, I've let them be. Nobody's fighting over it. Um... All right, let's see. What do we have going on? Alex, have you ever read Trophius de Boise? No, I have not. They're a cool fish, though. They are really neat. I do love them. Uh, the other thing I've noticed in my in my uh, room right now is, check this out, that buried shrimp. There are buried shrimp in all my tanks, like all my wild, wild types of... Uh, all my wild types of uh, shrimp are definitely buried up, so I don't know what's going on, but uh, great. Um, let's see here. Right on, Glitch. <laughs> plug it in, plug it in. Um, let's see here. I would like to, you to know that I switched to Dr. Pepper Cherry Zero Sugar, and I highly recommend it. You know, a lot of people really like the zero Dr. Peppers, um, like the zero calorie or zero sugar or whatever. I'm sorry, I gotta have my sugar. But I respect that, and I know that it's terrible for me. But I don't care. I don't even have any lower teeth to worry about at the moment. Um, alright, Fish Kid. Wait, so if you add tannins to your water, uh, does it affect when you're cycling your tanks uh, with things like fish food and quick start? It does, um, as long as your pH doesn't drop below about 6.5 or 6, that's the range 6 to 6.5 in which bacteria, nitro nitrogen uh, ba fixing bacteria, so there are two types of bacteria that we basically, that if you get uh, ni uh, bacteria in a bottle, you'll, you'll dump it in your tank, all those uh, quick start bacterias and things, we use nitrobacillus and nitrobacter, and um, basically, they are uh, ones that, that die if it gets down to 6.0 pH. So, there's that. Um, let's see here. Uh, Taven, hello. I have always have questions to ask until I join a live chat. Well, no worries. If you have one, 
Fire it off. If not, relax. Enjoy yourself. Uh, Angie, what's up? Um, how often do I do water changes? Now, that totally depends on the tank. Um, this one, it evaporates pretty quickly, but also I have half beaks up here, and I have pseudomagills hanging out all over, and bettas, so I make sure to keep the water level low, plus all these, like, um, the turbulence and the, uh, well, really it creates negative ions, and there's no information for sure proven about negative ions, uh, but moving water and waterfalls and rapids create them, and a lot of fish need those specific places to spawn or to um, to feel comfortable. That's like where they're collected, you know, uh, on the cataracts, as they call them uh, in Africa, oftentimes on rivers. Um, and so I like to have for certain tanks where I'm trying to emulate like a, um, a hill stream or a flowing river. I like to have a drop of a few inches also from the hang off the back. Uh, it's, I don't know if it's doing anything, but it seems to make my fish more lively. It probably oxygenates the water a bit more too, breaks the surface tension up. Um, uh, oh yeah, thanks Muppet. Yeah, if you want to get merch, <laughs> there's a link to it but also uh i have uh some new merch that i just haven't uploaded yet i've just been busy um tootling around uh you know going down to portland and then coming back and then uh had to do uh water changes and some work on stuff had to do some uh emails some graphic design side job stuff and then uh after that i would say uh now I, I should hopefully this week have some time to get to working on the merch and also upload a mug and a towel which have been requested. Now I never usually put my uh, info as in uh, the secret history on any of my merch. I just like to let people tell other people as they ask them about the shirt or whatever it is. Uh, but I've had some requests to have the branding so I will do so. Uh, I listen to the people. I'm a man of the people. Um, all right, let's see. There's a question. How much crushed eggshells do you recommend for now? Uh, for my now hundreds of baby mystery snails in a 40-gallon tank? And what kind of eggs? Doesn't matter what kind of eggs. Um, that's just a way to get calcium. Now, if you don't already eat a bunch of eggs, don't go buy a bunch of eggs to do that. That's just a way to cheaply get calcium. You can go to the store and get um, Plaster of Paris for like 15 bucks, and that would be probably a lifetime for your aquarium. You can then pour that into Mix Up Plaster of Paris, which is just like for, it's a plaster for casting like figures or molding and stuff like that. Um, and it is... Uh, it will harden up your water and add calcium and carbon to your water uh, in very short order. You can pour it into uh, an aquarium or into a, a refrigerator tray for ice cubes, and then crack that, pop them out, and you'll have these plaster of Paris cubes. And one of those or two of those in a 40-gallon breeder should last you like three years, you know. Um, so you could t take care of all your tanks, I'm sure with a bottle of that or you could get a cuttlefish bone break that um but really what the snail shells do is or i mean what the uh, egg shells do and i don't have proof of this but you can watch and see that when they're in a slimy mulmy uh naturally uh, decomposing uh environment like this um sluice way on this filter when they're up in the filter and there's all those colonies of microbes and fungi and bacteria and everything, slowly the eggs deteriorate. The shells disappear. I like to recommend uh, boiling the eggs a little bit. Uh, otherwise, you can get a sulfury smell and sometimes different bacteria grows on there. So I just boil the egg shells after I've saved them and, and rinsed them slightly and then I boil them. And then I just crush them up and I'll put them in the filter from time to time. But then the bacteria will colonize the surface area of those eggshells because it's not like the, 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 by putting eggshells in your filter, that doesn't directly just diffuse into your water nicely. It actually needs to go into the food chain. So either the plants need to suck up the loose amount or um, you know your snails are gonna do so by eating plants or eating um, bacteria or 
uh, mulm or algae that's condensed that. So really you're trying to get it into the bottom of the food pyramid and then get it to work its way up through the ranks, essentially. Um, also, my uh, African multi-line barbs or eight-line fire barbs, whatever you want to call them, they, uh, they've they had a, two or three new babies survive to knuckle size. There's one right there. Um, in this tank, which surprised me. I thought this guy would eat them, or she would eat them. Uh, also, the new uh, Pandora cichlids are doing good, the Epistos. And so are the... Um, the uh, Cynodonis uh, catfish, they're doing well. Uh, Petricola. How many tanks do you set aside for grow out of your fish you're breeding for profit? So, uh, that's a really good qu question, Melissa. Um, I don't necessarily... That, that Okay, let me think about that. So, I don't really breed for profit like I used to, where I would have... One tank ready with the parents, one tank ready with uh, nothing, and it was just, you know, getting prime with lots of little bacteria, microbes, maybe some shrimp hanging out in there. I don't do that anymore. Um, basically, I want tanks where the parents can feel comfortable enough to spawn, and then I've got little tanks up above where I keep shrimp generally, but sometimes there's hardly anything in these tanks. Sometimes it's just um, a few shrimp, uh, some random surface area and plants and stuff and a bunch of scuds for instance uh, or the Riley shrimp here and a bunch of stupid pond snails that I don't really want in here anymore um, or some guppies well then I decide okay well what kind of fish am I growing out if it's baby bettas well then I toss them up here if it's uh, if it's something really tiny like half beak fry they're right here um, so I don't really uh, plan out the space like I used to I don't really try to maximize profit anymore I'm not I'm not ch chugging away or plugging away at um, you know making sure that I could get the most out of everything because if I wanted to do that really what I would do is I would I would probably have a um, you know in these 40 breeders I'd have maybe two that are for plants alone Dutch style plant them put double lights on them so they're growing super fast, use aqua soil and CO2 on them right there. And then I would do uh, up here, you know, I'd pick species only probably tanks. And uh, this right now is one of the few species only tanks I have just because they're so dang mean. Um, but I like biotopes. I like making fish feel at home. And if they happen to have babies, then great. Um, this one, you know, I've got Cynodonis in here that spawn. They just don't have any salt water for their babies. You've got shrimp in here. We've got the lizard catfish in here. We've got, um, and we've got the uh, five apistos, uh, three females and two males in here. Uh, and that's pretty light load for a 20 long for me usually compared to like over here. But, you know, oftentimes when I see mating behavior, that's when I'll step in and do something about it and and grab a pair of someone. Uh, you know, if I were to see, for instance, um, like these, these uh, Beckford Eye Pencilfish, she's really full of eggs right now. If I wanted 50 baby Pencilfish, I'd take her and I'd toss her in this tank. Um, and I'd feed her live food. Um, but... If I wanted to breed like max profit, I'd probably get her, her, and the other one that's pregnant or full of eggs right now, and I'd probably put them in a tank like that that's really dense, and then have them have their babies, pull the parents out as soon as the eggs are gone, uh, and put one male in there with them, uh, and then I would uh, maybe have a fine net, you know. So I, there, there's way more efficient ways to do it than what I do. This guy's going to town. Uh, he's eating that algae like there's no tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, like my, my plecos, I'm growing the babies out. I throw a few in each tank, they're eating the biofilm. If I really wanted to be growing plecos for profit, um, I would be having zucchini in a tank and I'd gravel vac it every day. It wouldn't be a, 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 an ecosystem that's like cycled and okay on its own for days on end it would be more of a production line. And and that's, you know, that's just kind of 
I guess that's just kind of how I decided to set things up. And on that note, too, we'll look at the other tanks real quick. Um, so, on that same note, uh, I mean, like, these angelfish, they'll probably spawn in this tank, and I'll have to take the eggs out. Um, the Venezuelan quarries, they already did spawn in this tank recently, and I took the eggs off the glass. So that just requires a lot of paying attention to the tanks. And that's kind of my style of how I'm, I'm spawning things now, is just every tank, ideally I tell myself that I want three species to feel comfortable enough to spawn in. Um, you know, here's another age of the uh, bristlenose plecos growing out. Um, also, we introduced, I got these in Portland, they're really pretty, they're the... Uh, Part parrotfish, part convict cichlid. So they're going to be mean when they get big, but right now they're teeny tiny. Uh, and they're really cute. But uh, they're the polar uh, blue uh, hybrids, and I think they're pretty cute. So I just put them where I could watch them for now. But again... Yeah, I don't really have a system. I do do. I have done some breed, breeding fish for profit videos in the past. Um, I mean, this guy, this or this gal rather, she has so many babies with her partner. They're five years old now. I got them at Aquatic Arts. They've probably spawned over two thousand babies for me in five years. In fact, he is on babies right now. I guarantee it. He's doing the little dance with his fins. See that? He's aerating that cave, so that means there's eggs in there, almost certainly, when he's alternating right, left, right, left, right, left, and he won't leave that cave during feeding time. That'll be the ultimate decider, but that that paddling he's doing, I almost guarantee you they have more eggs right now. So I don't sweat it so much, though, how many I'm growing out anymore, um, unless it's something endangered, and then I then I'll give it its own tender love and care somewhere um let's see let's see here do 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 uh what do you recommend as the easiest live food for elisoma vinegar eels for sure or baby brine shrimp one or the other but vinegar eels are super easy hey jane uh courtney good to see you mug 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 i see i see you uh, <laughs> Lemel. Uh, we need stickers, Alex. Okay, all right, stickers. We can get to stickers for sure. Um, what do you do with your fry if you don't have space? Would you ever consider doing a fish giveaway for viewers? You know, I used to do that, and I give them away locally sometimes if if um I have too many fry, especially like when I was doing live bears really intensively, and every tank had like. 40 live bears at the top adult wise um now right now i've just got my um my bell bottom males and a few females in here and then we've got uh, a few other tanks of them in the other room but um i'm not really working on those lines the same way as i used to but they're they're all up in those tanks they don't have any heater any filtration they're just they're guppies i mean come on guys they're guppies they can be fat and sassy uh, and I, you know, they get light most days. I just have it off right now. Um, but yeah, um, I would love to give more away, uh, on the channel, but one, it's just a pain to coordinate with people and then live stuff. It's hard this time of year anyways. And so that's why I've kind of defaulted into supporting aquatic arts so much. Uh, and you know, we, we always have the rotating discount code at the top of my uh or near the top of my description uh info on the uh live stream or on a video description and if it's changed just check my most recent video and it's right now um the black friday sales over 30 percent off is over and so the the deal is now uh 15 off if you haven't shopped there uh in the last few months and if you have then it's 10 percent off uh, but I think uh, they're going to close down for a little bit for the holidays because shipping is just going to be so bad this year. I mean, they've already warned my friends with fish shops and things. This little glow light has the most incredible orange on its head. I'll have to get a picture that shows the true color. But it, it's just like really like a glow light. It's glowing. Um, none of the other ones are, though. But that one is just, man, 
just it looks like it has an LED on its head. Very cool. Um, but in any case, yeah, so um, I like to work through them more now. So Aquatic Arts, if you want to support them, then I get commissions from them. I get a few percent from them, and then I can give away gift certificates to their their website or to uh, or we I could buy something and then send it to a fan. Um, same with like Redfish Bluefish or Dan's Fish. Uh, there's a, a couple places that I enjoy shopping with because they have the ethics and morals of how to treat fish. They may be more expensive, shipping may be more, but they do it the right way. And that's the truth of it is I could do a lot more shipping of fish. I could make more money. People are always asking for certain fish, but I wouldn't be doing the fish justice. There would be DOAs of probably about 5 or 10% in the winter. And I just ethically don't feel right about that. Um, nor do I enjoy f fulfillment of shipping uh, side of things. So... I'd rather just focus on this stuff and then hopefully um, facilitate getting fish to y'all or gift certificates. Uh, all right, let's see here. Uh, yeah, uh, Cats Aquatics makes a uh, calcium food for crustaceans and snails. A lot of them are starting to come around and do that, which is great. People need to realize in the food industry, and I'm doing a video in December of the trends that will be coming up in 2022 and 2023. I always do a forecast a video, but one of them that's been going on in the UK and uh, Germany and Italy, France for a while is that you can buy live, um, live cultures at the pet store pretty easily, and there's big brand names that supply like a bag of Daphnia. And that's a very time-sensitive thing, and it's fragile. you got to get it there and sell it, and the turnover has to be enough that it's quick. Um, but that being said, I mean, I think that's something that there's a market for in the U.S. as well, especially culture starters. Uh, yeah, we got a great crowd in here tonight, uh, it, it, for sure. Uh, I appreciate everybody hanging out in here tonight. What's... What's the easiest uh, live food to maintain? Probably vinegar eels because you just take half. You don't even need to. I mean, this is a recipe. There's plenty of recipes out there. You cut up an apple, uh, put a few slices of it into a bottle, half water, half uh, vinegar, apple cider vinegar, and uh, get a little uh, teaspoon of the culture of the vinegar eels and uh, put a hole in the top of the bottle with a cotton ball at the top to kind of serve as a airlock and boom you've got a uh, you've got the uh, those bottles up there I've got tannins in one the dark one and then over there I've got uh, uh, the, the little the little nematodes the vinegar eels and uh, yeah they're they'll they'll keep living like that for six months to a year without food changes, which is nice. But they do I they do a lot better if you do keep up with them. Uh Cynodon is spawning, I wish. Yeah, when these guys get bigger, I hope they do. I've never really had full grown Cynodonis um like in numbers. I've always had like two or three. And this time I've got six and I'm probably gonna get nine total. I just think that they'll be happier. Taven says, uh, I have roughly 8.2 pH, 120 parts per million kH, uh, 300 parts per million GH coming out of the tap. What fish do you recommend? Also, 40-gallon breeder. I love Tetris, but I think they wouldn't thrive. Yeah, you're probably right there. Now, you could add a bunch of plants. Um, plants will bring that number down. You could add aqua soil, which is a little pricey, but... <laughs> You know, once you pay for it, it's good for a few years. So if you had ADA aqua soil, like Amazonia, um, or Brightwell that's for shrimp, like this stuff here, um, that'll drop your number down to probably, if you're at 8.2, I would guess it would probably get you to like 7.5. Just having plants and a good um, nitrifying substrate that actually, it actually gives off nitrogen. So... It can in, you can't have a super heavy stock tank at first. You need to grow your good bacteria. You need to have either a canister filter or a few sponge filters or a, a nice oversize. Like this is for a 75 
gallon. It's it's huge. It's like almost a foot and a half long, and it's on a 40 breeder. I, I like to do overkill with the filtration if I'm going to bother with filtration. Otherwise, I don't do any filtration, like here, and um, it's fine. But if I'm going to filter, I over filter. Uh, and in either case, the bacteria seems to take over uh, and take care of things. But I would recommend, Taven, that maybe look at an African biotope. These guys can withstand harder water, the fire barbs, and they're very similar to tetras. There's also the eight banded barbs. All the uh, Lake Tanganyikan fish would probably thrive pretty well for you. Live bearers would do well for you. Um, where are they? Oh, right here. These guys would probably be fine with you. Um, and uh, the Turkana jewel cichlids, that's a little bit harder water. Not like hard, hard, but a little bit harder. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of these fish are being raised in Florida now. And so if they're tank raised specifically, you can get away with a whole heck of a lot. I mean, you can have rams now in 8.0 water or 7.5 water. And people report that they get them to spawn and everything. Uh, that wasn't the case 10 year, 20 years ago as much. Um, but now with um, the products out there, I would say don't chase your water. I mean, don't, don't try to mend your water. Unless you're trying to do a special breeding project with one or two species, don't, don't force the water. Um, the other thing you can actually surprisingly do are a lot of labyrinth fish, so garamis. Some are sensitive, you'll have to do your research, but some are sensitive and need uh, a low TDS like these chocolate or Valiant gar Valenti garamis. Uh, but others, uh, you know, like uh, sparkling garamis generally or um, opal garamis, I think. I might be incorrect on that. But they're, they're, you know, they're labyrinth fish. They can take gulps of air from the top. And so they don't care as much. They, it, their system doesn't matter. It doesn't matter on their system quite as much as the fish that are breathing and extracting air all the time. Uh, there's also a lot of killifish that can live in hard water in small amounts of water. So look into the killifish that are out there. Uh, there's a whole group of them from Africa. Some are peat spawners, but others live in the desert. Gobies are another good one. That there's some desert gobies that can have pretty hard water too. Um, let's see here. A lot of people in here right now. I know, we got 128 people in here. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for hitting. Although, we got 68 thumbs up. So apparently half of you don't like me. Um, uh, H2O Botanicals, I do not have the Blixa right now. I do not. I sold it at auction so that I could get, um, <laughs> uh, you don't even want to know. So I could get a couple other plants. Can fish be allergic to food? Yes. But it's going to be a one-off. Like one fish would have an, a reaction. Um, and usually in reactions in, you know, um, they don't have gentle, delicate skin like we do where hives and rashes show up super easily. Uh, so it would probably manifest itself as either lesions if it's really bad but more than likely, it'd be throwing up and diarrhea and, and, and uh, digestive problems from them. Uh, Good Life Aquatics says, I use the code. Save 12 bucks. I appreciate that. I really do. Uh, especially since you just missed the big sale. I'm sorry about that, that we were talking about last night. Um, oh, Jesse, you got uh, 25 bucks off, too. Right on. Um, let's see here. Any tips for a new zebra pleco owner? Ooh. Um, keep their water clean. Don't let the nitrates build up whatsoever. I've seen several people lose them to that. The other thing is they like warm water. And, um, watch your heater like a hawk. If you can, I would even heat the room rather than the tank. Even if it's 80 degrees. Uh, because... I know Bentley had one where I think it was his heater got hot, stuck on, and um, he lost a whole colony. Dean uh, from Aquarium Co-op uh, videos, uh, who's also in my fish club, he lost some. Uh, so I think I know a few people now who've lost them, and it's frequently... Uh, 
uh, it's frequently pretty common to have the heater get stuck too hot or not enough movement in the water to move that hot hot heat like they're keeping it at 86 or something or 84 and trying to induce spawning or something and all of a sudden you know the filter stops working or a power head turns off that corner gets up to like a hundred and um, yeah it can it can get bad so they live on a pretty pretty big uh, what's the word precarious conditions I would say um, Coast Gem USA I don't know I don't know enough about them to comment I'm, unfortunately I'm sorry um, I do know that um, Gemco uh, Air their air pumps great <laughs> uh, like their their um, what do you call them the uh, the ones for the whole fish room I'm spacing on the name of what what that's called when you've got the whole uh, inline, I think inline air, yeah. Uh, let me get this set up again. I feel like we'll we'll have a fireside chat with my face. Probably not my face that brought 130 people in here. I know that, but I feel like I need to connect. Like 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 we're we're drifting, kids. Why won't this move? There we go. Yay! It's going to go down slowly. Slow downfall. All right, let's see here. Everyone in here, go subscribe to Stephen P. 2003 Aquatics. Um, he's nearly at 1,000. Yeah, if you haven't checked him out, I would suggest it. He's got some music parodies, uh, or actually original songs, come to think of it, that he has done about fish keeping lately that have been really really clever and funny and he's an intelligent guy him and his wife put on a good live stream i always enjoy it so i can uh happily uh suggest that y'all go check out uh stephen p 2003 and subscribe uh you won't be let down uh, and also rico who's doing the uh, christmas giveaway he's near a thousand too uh so yeah, let's see here, Kevin, um, suggestion on what I can do, I have one or two parts per million ammonia out of your tap, uh, are you on a well, because that might mean a dead animal in your water, uh, that's pretty high, it means that your municipal water source more than likely, um, has like leaves or something in it like old old lines or clogged lines and it's decaying in there um that's not good for humans either you should check and see what the legal limit for humans is and then contact your water uh your utilities district um but other than that i mean i would avoid that water i mean i've had um I've had TDS spike up and pH changes. I've never had ammonia come out of city water, though. Um, nor have most people that I know who've looked into it. They've found some other cause. Like, maybe in their house, their hot water heater, um, you know, had some sort of rat dead in it or something. I, I, I only know of that happening once. But, I mean, like, there's weird things that can happen like that. But I would call... Usually for 25 bucks at most, but usually it's free, you can get a water, they call it an assay, like essay but with an A, um, and you can get a printout of everything that's in your water from where your house is on the line. And they'll give you like every element that's in there. Um, but I don't know, it's pretty unusual to get ammonia straight out of the tap. Uh, so... I'd, I'd figure that out. But if you are getting ammonia out of the tap like that, then, I mean, you could have duckweed, um, hornwort, uh, wisteria water sprite, valcinaria, um, guppy grass. You could just have a ton of that. You could leave a 40-gallon breeder empty or something. Or, I mean, no fish lots of plants and just let it cycle the water and then do your water changes from that i know that's not the coolest idea ever because you can't keep fish in there but the thing is if you got good lighting on it 
fish actually like ammonia, or I mean, plants like ammonia better than nitrates and nitrites uh, in, in small doses. And that's a small dose for a plant. Um, so if you've got 0.5 or 0.1 part per million or whatnot of ammonia in your, in your water, really, uh, and that's what you determine it is, and it's within the legal limit and you can't get them to fix it or anything, uh, then that's probably what I do or I'd get a rain barrel. I know you don't, you live in California, so I don't know what kind of rain you have that, um, uh, could do that. Uh, Olivia, let's see, help. Uh, a week and a half ago, Ick killed all my fish. Uh, we fought hard, but it still killed them. Uh, we bought more fish. When can we add them to the old tank? Well, so, that's a good question. Uh, so, Ick lives a life cycle of a few weeks. I don't know the exact timeline, but it doesn't matter because the exact timeline has changed over time as different strains of ick have evolved also. But essentially, ick lives in your substrate, and then it comes out, and it lives in your fish. And it attacks their gills and, and cloaca, or where they use the restroom. Uh, it, it attacks those areas and their soft tissue um, first. Then it uh, starts to show up on the exterior gills, around the eyes, the mouth, and then you'll see the, the um, lesions on the body. Well, the body is when you're actually in there, it's a colony of bees, basically. And when that little white dot opens up, they've been growing eggs inside of the fish's flesh. And that's when they're released. Well, they're free swimming for like a week. Um... I don't know the exact number that they're giving out now. It's changed over time. If you read old books, it used to be like four days or two days window that you could target them and kill them all. But now because of intense farming going on from uh, aquaculture industry, there are resistant to treatment forms of ick as far as chemical treatment. However, if you turn the temperature up to 84.2 degrees all forms of ick that we know of in fresh water will die um i tend to say turn it up to 86 because there's fluctuations heaters don't just stay constant they're either all on or all off and uh, then they have a thermostat in them that says oh we're too cold and then there's a lag period so if you looked at it it would be a graph that looks like a wave it's like a sine curve uh, and so I would suggest that you, um, you wait at least two weeks with the, the heat up to 86 degrees, especially if there's no fish in there, turn it up to 90 degrees, like screw them, screw those ick guys, but they can live in cyst form down in the substrate for at least two weeks in a, like a dormant state. But when you turn up the heat, it turns up their metabolism. And so they come through that stage and they have to go in search of a fish. Um, now, I'm not sure if it can also host on like snails uh, or, or other critters if you have those in there, like shrimp or something. Uh, but I want to say no. I want to say that they've evolved for more fish um, only and, and, or reptiles, you know, like frogs and fish, but mostly fish. But I would forget all the chemicals and stuff. Um, to me, heat does it best. Unless you have a real temperature-sensitive species, then obviously don't do that. But um, let's see here. Uh, tips for collecting leaves for shrimp food. Just make sure that they're dry. That, whoa, I'm almost falling over. Uh, just make sure that they're dry, that they're not mildewy or bug-eaten. That's usually a bad sign. Uh, so if they've fallen and they're dry and they fell off the tree naturally and you don't think the area was sprayed with pesticides, you know, or fertilizer to like really like I wouldn't go to a, an orchard and do it. But if you've got a nice old like oak tree or maple tree, mulberry tree, magnolia tree, madrona tree, any of those living um, beechwood, birch, um, alder, poplar 
any of those, uh, if you've got one of those living, say, out in a in the park near your house, as long as there's not, like, a coal fire, like, power uh, plant or something right nearby, you're probably totally fine to just pick up those leaves. Like I said, a lot of times you'll get leaves this late into the season because the rains have started that are kind of laminated together. And some people use those. They'll boil them, and the, that'll kill things. Um you when you boil them you lose some of the botanical tannins you you lose the um the collagen enhancing uh, properties that are in there um the carrageenan that's in seaweed also is also in some of leaves and things uh, all the chlorophyll though you want to make sure that's out of there so you don't want green leaves you want to make sure they're done because the chlorophyll for a photosynthetic activity is a completely different chemical than the protective carotenoids and um um uh, athataskins and xan um uh cyana uh I'm forgetting the name of the the blue uh, pigmentation uh, one, but in any case, basically those those chemicals uh, get in there to protect the plant, and then they fall. Um, right on, Melissa. Happy to hear you got a twenty five dis dollar discount. Um, I yeah I I spent four hundred, so I got about a hundred dollar discount uh, on Aquatic Arts. But super broke now, so I shouldn't buy any fish. I should only trade fish. Uh, Secret history. Hey, dude, don't want to be rude, but while you have got lots of people in here, would you mind giving Stephen P. and Rico a shout out? Yeah, I've given them twice already. Maybe I'm just delayed. Maybe I'm really uh, far behind. But definitely, they're both great guys that I would love uh, y'all to check out. Am I really far behind? Okay, I'm going to skip all the questions. I see a super chat. Where did the super chat go come from? It's not showing up on my... Oh, here we go. Uh, summertime Winter Gamer. Hey, pygmy quarries seem to have ick. None of the other fish in the tank are catching it. Uh, other than the quarries. Could it be something else? Yes, it could be flukes. Um, I would use General Cure on that, actually. They're an armored uh, catfish, and they shouldn't get ick like that. They will get ick on their gills and their face and their nostrils and their barbels, but they shouldn't get it on their body. Um, you may be dealing with another uh, protozoa or some sort of little, um, you know, um, like burrowing critter that lives in their flesh and then hatches and comes out. But general cure will help. And if that doesn't help, um, the other thing that you can do is you can... Um, use uh like prosequil or um some of the dewormers antiparasiticals uh those will for sure um you could also do both at once it's just more stressful on the fish so if the fish are dying or seem to be really like struggling then you might want to use both at the same time i'd use api general cure and um their parasite guard paraguard or parasite cleanse or, um, honestly, if you really want to knock anything out of the park, um, Aquarium Co-op started, got this stocked for them, which is Fritz Expel P. And what it is, is it's Levamisol. It's like pig, cow, sheep, horse, elephant level uh, strength dewormer. And um, a little goes a long way. But that will completely clean out any um, any nematode or flatworm because it dehydrates them from the inside out cellularly. Um, yeah, and then also the other thing is with quarries, the it's never going to hurt to um, you know catfish. They, they root around in the bottom, so they tend to get more of the little bugs, parasites, and and issues that live in the bottom. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of things that benthic fish get into. And it's one of the things that ends up, if you have a very natural biotope aquarium, it's one of the things that ends up being uh, a bit of a, a challenge sometimes, especially if you've gotten wood and leaves from the wild there is the small chance that you get um, 
you know, nematodes or problems from there. More than likely, though, it, the, the problems came from an aquarium shop where you've got thousands of fish from tropical water and some little bugger was living in the stomach lining or in the plant, uh, in the rhizomes of, you know, some plant or something, uh, or on a piece of duckweed for all we know. Uh, let's see here. Um, ba -ba 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 -da 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 -da. um oh yeah, that's another good, um, yeah, pothos definitely removes toxins from water for sure. But yeah, thanks for the super chat, Summer Winter Games. Let me know how that goes. Um, seriously, uh, let me know about that one. You could probably give the promoting a rest, Fish Kid. It makes me feel a little... Oh, sorry. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, oh, guys, don't worry. I'm. You guys are very... Uh, you guys are very kind in their uh, mods, but if people want to make fun of my teeth or whatever, let them. I don't care. Uh, let's see. There's some days I care. Today, I really don't care. Uh, but <laughs> uh, let's see here. Just got back from Rockville. What do fish... Wait. What fish do you think is the most metal? Mr. Grommy. Hmm. I like the goblin fish. Aquatic Arts, we were looking at those last night, and they just look really hardcore. The other ones that are um, pretty metal to me are the little, um, uh, what are they called? Lump suckers. <laughs> They're pretty hardcore looking. Um, some of the, uh, let's see here, I've got a book handy. Well, let me try to find one of the other ones. There's also a fish with a Latin name, Demon Satanica. Uh... Like, that's what it translates to. Um, that's pretty metal fish. Uh, alien bettas with the metallic shimmer are pretty metal looking. Um, sheep's head, um, saltwater fish, they're really scary when they're spawning. So are, I mean, for that matter, so are humpies. So are goliath groupers and stuff. There's some pretty scary looking fish. Uh... A lot of the, you know, a lantern fish, that's a scary, scary as hell fish. Um, the Goliath tiger fish in Africa, another really scary looking fish. Um, but I think the most metal fish of all is the Kandiru. Because it swims up your pee hole. <laughs> and they're afraid of it all throughout the Orinoco Basin and the Amazon Basin, more so than piranhas or alligators or caimans, they're just like, don't go deeper than your waist if you're actively relieving yourself in the water. They have barbs, they will hook in there, they will also get in your nose, your eye, your ear, any orifice uh, that you can think of, they've been known to get into. It used to be thought to be a myth, but now they have confirmed it. Um, let's see here. Can you come over and mow my lawn and fold my laundry, Alex? You never help me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, Rico, I was just saying that, um, that I was hanging out with you the other night, and uh, that you last night came over and talked about fish miss uh, and how to sign up and all that, and so... Um, if you would like, Rico, you are a mod too. Feel free to drop the info if people want to participate in Fishmas. Uh, hi guys, I'm a Rico and I'm, wait, I'm friendly. Uh, check me out. I tried to go later than your stream tonight too. Um, for anybody who's been living under a dumpster for the last 50 years, this is Jerry Garcia, not Rico. But, I mean, they could be distant cousins. I mean, this guy's way smaller, but, you know. Jerry Garcia in a pouch, man. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Um, <laughs> I would help you with chores if I were there. Uh, right on, right on, right on. Uh, Bunny Viper, what's up? How are you doing, ma'am? Uh, is Fritz product interchangeable with the fenbendazole it is in a way but levamisole is like the next set of guns like if 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 that's a 22 rifle 
Uh, like Fritz is a 22 rifle. The other one's like a 30 out six for hunting elk rather than like shooting squirrels. Uh, if, uh, if it's, uh, hmm, what other things can we say? If it's the, uh, kids happy meal size, uh, Fenbendazole, then it's the, uh, trucker cup that doesn't fit in anything that's like 164 ounces. Uh, so no, there's a big difference in the Levamisol, but, uh, definitely. Um, do you have angelfish? Uh, yeah, I do. I have lots of, or I, I've always had angelfish of some sort. Um, my angelfish though are very active. Um, <laughs> ADHD, who made fun of your teeth? Those are teeth of knowledge. I hope they're not, because they're going to pull the other ones soon, you know, after that lightning strike. Uh, all my teeth are pretty much scrambled in problems. If your angelfish are hiding, they need more, they're either scared of something, and it's another fish probably, or they don't feel secure. And so, dither fish help. Having little fish that are doing other things helps. Having places where they can go and hide if they want to help. I tell people over and over again, like my shyest fish, hands down, is this ram right here. And I, he's out right now. But uh, if I get too near him, even talking this loud is probably enough that he's going to bounce in a sec here. But uh, this little ram, uh, the fact that I opened up this area for him, but he has a perimeter and rocks and caves and lotus pods and little mossy areas where he can go hide behind the heater, uh, that makes it so that he does come out. So a lot of times people say, oh, I don't want to put a bunch of plants in there, I'll never see my fish. The truth is, if you don't put plants in hiding spots and sticks and things that break up lines of sight, you probably will see your fish even less than if you just actually gave them a natural biotope. Um, let's see here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> armbands that's an interesting autocorrect uh uh let's see here thomas says alex does pothos help remove nitrates in high-tech dutch aquascape to get more red colors from my plants or will i just have to fertilize everything more you know this is kind of an age-old question thomas and that's a really good question so right now my nitrates in this tank are zero. Zero. My red plants aren't looking that hot. I mean, live stream always makes them look even worse than they are. But, I mean, this is a blood red color, believe it or not. I know the live stream doesn't make it look like that. We've got Crip Red Tiger Spiralis variegation here, uh, or variegated. Um, and so some plants, like this Aponegeaton, is a, a crimson or blood reddish, purplish red. Um, some things like, like, uh, Ludwigia, uh, super red repens in this zero, uh, nitrogen environment would be very, very red. Uh, others want iron and it is only a select few that truly want the iron. For years and years, the myth was iron, iron, iron. And really, really what it was about was getting the nitrates down and the TDS down, but still having your metal baseline elements uh compensated for so if you have root tabs that's what i would use is root tabs um i often do actually uh impregnate the the um substrate especially when it's a shallower substrate of a few inches rather than like over here i've got all this stuff to work with and i put all sorts of pre um I, you know, I put cop, uh, a light copper compound that will break down slowly, slowly, slowly over time because it'll kill shrimp if it's too fast. Oh, you're so cute, little buddy. Um, and then I, I put um, 
uh, a nail or two in there that are old rusty nails, that's because it's oxidized rust. It's oxidized iron, whereas just iron filings that aren't oxidized yet or anything, they've got to oxidize. Then they've got to get eaten by a bacteria. Then they've got to get um, split up amongst the substrate, then eaten by an archaea bacteria. And then that has to get um, worked into a biofilm or into some colony of early uh, anoxic bacteria in a deep substrate. So some of these things are long game plans. Just get um, just get fertilizer uh, pellets or, or tabs, um, and, and you should be good. I like the Seachem ones uh, off the top of my head. I like those ones. I also like the ADA ones that come with the uh, new Amazon or uh, Amazona soil, uh, where you, they're like little, they look like little kibble pieces for like a hamster or something. They're like cylindrical. Those are nice. You can break them up um, and a little bit. Uh, you don't want to crush them because it'll dissolve too quickly. But uh, yeah, get those um, nutrient tabs every six inches or so in a grid. So six inches and then maybe go three or four inches over. And then at the three inch mark, plant one and then six inches down another, you know. So it's like bricks basically or, or like a chessboard. That will give you your stem plants that feed from their uh, roots. That'll give them the nitrates, nitrites, uh, the metals and things, the iron that they need. Uh, whereas you can keep the water real low in TDS and everything. Um, when you have that water that's super low in TDS, super low in minerality, then you do start to see this, which is you see the black tarnishing area. Anytime a snail bites on this, it's just, uh, in fact, I want to prune this. Um, it's just an opportunity um, for pathogens to, to make an inroad into your uh, slow-growing plants. So your boosts, your anubias, your java fern, stuff like that. Um, even though these white plants need to be near the top because they don't produce enough chlorophyll, um, to sustain themselves, they start getting kind of rag raggedy around the edges. Sometimes they'll get blackbeard algae or they'll get filamentous algae. Um, and that tells me that there is too much bio waste in the water. And basically the bio waste is just a matter of a debris, you know, like that. That's not attached to anything. It's breaking down into carbonic acid and into... Uh, nitric acid and then it's also got any metals any elements that were in there uh, as well as it's going to attract more poop from snails and things that are eating off that too so it's also important um, to some degree to have good flow if you want real red plants you want good flow and you want to clean out that underbrush and keep up with your trimming because you'll get leggy plants and then you'll get all these guys that are all trying to feed like crazy with their like i should cut this with these tap feeders and really the happiest guy even though he doesn't have light the most red guy i have in this tank probably is chilling right here under everything and if he had light, he'd be thriving. This AR Mini would be, you know, big and, and red. But uh, he's just kind of buried under a lot of different blockers of his light. Um, and But he's feeding from the substrate. So he's not feeding from the, the water. I hope that helps a little bit. Um, all right, hold on. I've got to see. I see a super chat, and I'm skipping to it because I don't want to lose it like I do sometimes. Yeah, I want to get some tattoos of some fish soon, too. Alexander, uh, thank you so much, buddy. You help out so very often, and and I've noticed you've been helping out other people like Dan's Fish, too, who are providing great services to our aquatic community. Man, I just can't tell you how much that means to me, and... Um, yeah, I mean, it, it really encourages me uh, to say, you know, there is a value to it. And, you know, there's a value to it when people say thank you, obviously, too. But, um, yeah, no, I just appreciate it. 
it 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 it's a it's a morale booster for sure. So thank you so much, Alex. And let me know if I can do anything for you, man. You seem like an intelligent guy who doesn't need a whole lot of help with the aquarium stuff uh, right off the top. But um, <laughs> if I can do anything to help, please let me know, man. Because, I mean, you've done so much for... I just, I mean, you saved a bunch of my fish when you got, sent me money for the AC. You allowed me to get, um, I mean, you've allowed me to you get enough money to have fertilizers and a twin star light. You know, I actually got the, this twin star, um, just the other day while I was down in Portland, this arrived and it's going to go here because this one's flickering. You can't see it live probably right now because it's not doing it too bad, but I've had this one for three years. Um, I broke my canister filter, uh, or I didn't. When we were moving, my dad's friend came, and the 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 CO2 and the canister filter were set up, and he just used a wrench and just went the wrong way because it's a German system that I had, and he let righty tighty lefty loosey. It's the opposite, but he just reeked on it and just busted the CO2 thing first. So he ruined uh, the top of the valve and the, the solenoid and regulator. And then I was like, hey, don't, don't, don't touch it. Don't do, do anything. And then he just pulls on the tubes right here. And he ends up pulling out those. And then water goes on the floor. So then my dad comes running in here. And this is all while I'm trying to go into to the bathroom to get uh, uh, towels to deal with the CO2 that had sprayed pressurized CO2 water like had sprayed it out this way. Um, and then uh, they they just like re reached in here and just yanked out my, um, what was it? Uh, 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 blah, Eheim 4, what's it called? Mm, I'm spacing on the name. But in any case, it was like a six gallon almost sump, but it was a uh, canister filter. But it expanded this whole system almost into exactly a 50-gallon unit, and it really filtered well. Well, ever since I've had this 75 hang off the back, and uh, yeah. But I just wanted to say that, like, you've allowed me to rebuild when crap like that happens. So thank you so much. Um, and everybody who's a member... Same goes for you, uh, for sure. Um, I mean, every dollar, especially when that's monthly, adds up a lot. And so whatever I can do to answer your questions, I really try to get to them uh, uh, out throughout the week and in other people's chats if someone has a question or if you message me. Um, but, you know, there's only so much time and I can only see so many different people. But um, I appreciate you all. We all need each other and we keep it all we all keep each other going and keep each other reinforced. Um, Eric says, I put pothos cuttings in my aquarium and they are now growing up the walls outside the aquarium and huge leaves. I never expected that to happen. It's beautiful. Yeah, um, I've got this this plant here that my wife put up here and it's too dark for it. I, I don't like literally it's growing better because of reflected light off the ceiling than the, the real bright light coming from here. Uh, and uh, so... Once it gets down, it's almost there, even though it's getting pretty raggedy. Um, I'm going to do another, um, I'll, I'll split it, I'll cut it, get a split, and then we'll we'll put one of the splits into here so that then we can, you know, vine it around. Uh, also, we recently trimmed this one, and then, oh, we have another one we trimmed over here, too. Uh, this lovely little feller uh, we trimmed and got new pot for uh but these will suck up nitrates pretty well too and in this room we've got like my avocado plant my wife's had this for actually 12 years and it's it looked real bad because last winter when we moved in february uh i was driving down the highway 55 miles an hour and it just it was snowing and there was ice uh also coming down like ice storm and it just would hit the leaves and just tear them off. This thing used to be a big, beautiful bush or tree, but it's slowly but surely coming back. It will survive um, just like our, well, I have an episode on variegation. If you're interested in house plants and uh, how the pigmentation of house plants works and how 
they use nutrients and things like that and how they can be incorporated into your aquarium uh check that out you might dig it can you dig it all right guys well i'm thinking i'm gonna get off of here my wife's gonna be home shortly and i said i would help make her dinner um thank you so much you guys lurkers super chatters friends questions i really appreciate you guys making this an interesting evening and uh, limiting the amount of pacing i do uh alex i have Corey fry in a hang on breeder box one week how long should i wait to place the fry um to place them into the fry grow out um once their little yolk sacs are gone if nothing's going to eat them they can go into any tank you want they're phenomenal at rooting around and finding little tiny planaria eggs little tiny little um seed shrimps and um water fleas and things that like you can barely see but like the little bugs that hop on top of the water uh in a lot of aquariums people have uh that are like the size of a piece of dust that kind of thing um your little baby quarries in an older tank they'll find all sorts of food on top of the just teeny pinch of food you need to feed them so some people like to do that other people like to um you know like boil or poach an egg or take a hard-boiled egg and whip up the yolk and uh, sometimes they'll add a little teeny pinch of um, pureed garlic to that and they'll put that into a tray if they're trying to super feed super speed grow them they'll use like um uh, a uh, tupperware container and they'll use the yolk with the garlic and they'll super feed them that protein uh and they'll grow very very fast but it mucks up the water daily. So you'd have to do a water change about an hour after feeding them each time. And you're talking about feeding them two or three times a day. So you can get real labor intensive with it. Or if you have a tank where you just have shrimp or something, just toss them in there um, as soon as their yolk sac's gone uh, and they'll be cruising around doing fine. They're not gonna eat the baby shrimp until they get bigger. When they start to look like a quarry, that's when they may start predating on little shrimp and stuff, and you might want to move them. Even though they're not that bad of predators of shrimp, to be honest. But to lie to you, they're ferocious. Glitch Aquatics, welcome to Lurker! Ring, ding, 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 ding. Um, well, on that note, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you again, guys. Super Chats, Mods, Friends family, uh, fishy folks. Always enjoy you guys being here. I got 800 other videos to check out. If you need help with a question, try looking for it with secret history in front of it because there's a pretty good chance I already done covered it at some point. Some of them I want to redo though. But uh, good luck everybody and if you need more follow-up with anything that I've tried to answer tonight Just drop it in the comments and uh, we'll try to get you sorted out There's plenty of helpful people here in this community and same with the Facebook page if you need to show us pictures or something Thanks guys. Uh, take it easy and have a wonderful night